to start. If we don't have um, a way to start in any haircut, in my opinion, we will not know where to start. We can get a bit, a little bit lost. Sometimes we go back to what we remember uh, from basics, maybe from beauty school, or maybe something that uh, you learned along the way. Uh, but having these type of diagrams is important to have prior to starting so you know where to go when we begin. So, and, and on the next one, Amanda? This will be your side view, uh, oh, your back view. So then in your side view, I didn't put them in, but they're just going to be in, live when we see Virginia. So now we're going to stop sharing the screen and get right into the haircut. All right, come on over. All right, say hi to Virginia. Hi, Virginia. <laughs> all right let me just get out of the way okay so we're going to start with the sectioning i have her pre-sectioned so the the way that i like to section out the fringe first on everyone whether you're cutting the fringe shorter leaving it long we still want to section this out to make sure that we have a front section so when i section out the front on any client that you work with, when we section out to the person's facial features, we will always get a balanced and even symmetrical parting. What happens if I talk about making this section two inches away from the hairline? It could be different for my next client because Virginia has maybe less hair in this area than one of my other clients. Or maybe Virginia likes less hair in her face but it always falls into the center part. So just to make sure I section out everything according to my client's facial features. So in this set, in this particular section, I'm going to turn her head down. We come into where the curvature of the head begins. This will be the top of the head. This is the curvature of the head. So where the curvature of the head, I begin a section that comes from that area to the end of her eyebrows, to the end of her other eyebrows. If she was um, another client and I do these same sections, it will still be balanced for the person you're working with. So we section this out, make sure that it's down. I have prepared her hair with Kitoko oil treatment, which um, if it's not your favorite, it should be. <laughs> it prepares the hair and leaves it nice and um, soft for any tool to be able to glide in. If you're using a razor, it helps to remain the texture intact. So that means that if some of you have heard that the, the razor can damage hair or curly hair, when you prepare it with the right products, it will leave your hair intact. Okay. Can I say that oil again? I'm sorry? Can I say the oil again? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, Amanda will also type it in the chat. I guess I assume everybody knows <laughs> it. <laughs> if you are new to ASP, uh, it, our Kitoko oil treatment is one of our star products in the line. And it, it's a very lightweight oil. Here, show it in the camera. Very light. And who is it made by? I'm so sorry? Who is it made by? Oh, ASP. So ASP. this class okay. is... Um, we are ASP America, so uh, uh, Afanash. <laughs> so if you know our brand here is Afanash Salon Professional, but we're going by ASP these days, ASP America, and this is where uh, the class is by. So actually, can I ask you, where are you logging in from? The person asking? Yes, Charleston, West Virginia. Ah, very nice, very nice. Um, so I'm thinking that whoever invited you will give you more information of who we are, and we will have more information at the end of the class as well. Yeah. A slide with our information so you can recognize us more on your next time. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so for our top section, we have a round section. Turn around. It goes around the top of the head. And when it comes to the back, if your client had a cowlick, we want to make sure that this top section is sectioned on the top and that the cowlick is included in that section. This will help that when we leave it down and when we start cutting it from the top, 
that this will give you the volume. Sometimes we know that if there's a calic right here, it opens up the hair. So if it's not being uh, included in the section that adds the volume, this hair, this haircut or hair will not lay with volume and the texture that we need. So very important to keep that in. And for the side sections, you can see that I'm behind the ear a little bit farther than normal. Normally right behind the ear will probably be right there with a bob, as we all know, we have this section where we have no hair. And if we cut or if we accidentally texture out too much hair there, what will happen is we will leave a hole. Very important to make sure that we leave our sections behind the ear a little bit further back to give room for hair to fall and um, add in some hair length at the behind the ear. Okay, so we were going to we're going to start cutting, and I want to show you Virginia's hair texture. So if you saw in some of her pictures from before, we can see that she has a lot of density back here. So because there's not a lot of length that we're going to cut, we will obviously take out some of the length. We're going to take about one inch. It is always important to lift up the hair of your client to see what kind of hairline they have. Right? A lot of times if we do a pixie or a, or a bob, we can see these sections that they lift up. We want to make sure that when we're cutting this, we're not cutting it too short because as you can see, it just completely shrinks up, making sure that we're going to leave some of that hair down and leave it alone. So don't cut the baby hairline. Knowing that this hair has so much hair, we're going to be subsectioning as we cut. Okay? So first, we're going to section, subsection this out by creating a line from behind the ear to behind the other ear to create a section in the middle. This section carries a lot of weight too, so we want to make sure that we cut this in smaller sections. So subsections, you'll hear me say sections and then subsection. Your main sections are already done, and now these are going to be your subsections. Again, think of it as a map. You will also hear me refer to where I hold the hair, not the way that we are normally used to. So I'm not going to talk about graduation or too many degrees or anything in that verbiage, more so we can all understand that this can be a complete way of cutting it on whatever level of stylus you are. You can be advanced, you can be um, a beginner, but this is going to make sense to everyone watching this class today, okay? All righty, so for this one, I think uh, I'm going to have Laura focus in on me around this side. Uh, right here, so I can stand on here. Here. Uh, can you guys see this angle where Laura is uh, focusing the camera? Amanda, do you, yes. can you see this? Okay. Yep. Yep. So for those of you, just pop over to Laura Ifrigan's screen and you'll be able to see um, a different angle. Will that work? What? Okay, great. Okay. So for my next subsection, I am going to be taking a section from the middle, leaving these two sections out of the way on the sides. I'm going to turn her back over to me just to make sure that I am doing this. Oh, no, that's what I wanted to do. Okay. Can we see that? Good. Okay. Can everybody see that I'm going to turn her back? There's a section in the middle. Normally, if you put your, your comb in the middle, it can be the same size of the width of your comb or a little bit wider. It just depends on how much hair your client has. Also depends on how wide the head is. And this is just to make sure that you're going to cut a center piece. This section here, we're going to cut length and remove hair at the same time. If it's not totally in the middle, guys, excuse me, because I am working sideways on her. <laughs> we know that when we're working on our clients, we're standing right behind them. So this will make sense to you when you're behind a chair. I'm going to switch your back. switching. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to start cutting here. We know Virginia has curly hair. Virginia also 
can have a lot of weight in this area. So we want to make sure that we tackle both, right? We want to make sure that we remove the length and the weight at the same time. And because her hair is curly, I am not pulling with too much tension in this area. I am just pulling it down enough to know where I want to cut. So I wanna show you, we're gonna move her chin down slightly. We want to cut about an inch. So about right here, where I keep my fingers is where I want to cut. This is about an inch. I hold it. I pinch it. From the mid shaft, so this is the beginning, this is the end of where I want to cut. I slide down my razor one time, two times to remove the weight. One more time, and as I get ready to cut, I'm going to cut straight with my razor. Oh, sorry, I wanna show you what I removed. I removed all of this hair. So that's weight and length. And now you can see where the length is. We take Nancy, we have one question come up. Are you doing um, an inverted bob, a blunt bob, textured bob? I think we can now see a little bit more as you yeah. did your first cut, but. <laughs> yeah, great question. We are going to be doing more of a blunt bob with a slight asymmetrical feel. So the you as we go into this, you're going to be able to see that these techniques can be used for any type of haircut you want to do. So these basic lines, these basic um, ideas are to cover all, all bobs, right? So today we're going to be a slightly angled, but the angle is going to be more on the, on the sections on the top. Here, we're going to create a very blunt line at the perimeter. Sounds good? And I will say with you, when you had taught us how to use the razor like that, I don't know that I was ever taught to use the razor in that way. And it really made it very simple to use. So if you're hesitant on using a razor, using it this way of doing those three cuts and then going in and doing the little bit of um, the length cut at the bottom really made a big difference. Yeah, thank you, Amanda. Yes, so I'm going to actually uh, repeat the movement on this section again. And for that person asking what kind of haircut, I wanna show you something. If I wanted to make this haircut very asymmetrical, meaning shorter from the middle going longer on the sides, I would hold this section on the side and over direct it by a lot, by bringing it straight to the middle of that first section that I previously cut. But I'm making this haircut just a little bit more of a straighter line, more blunt, but I still want to over direct slightly. Why? Because what happens is if I cut everything straight into this area, we know that we have a hairline that curves, right? All hairlines curve. If I was yeah. to just cut it right in front, I'm going to end up with shorter pieces on the side. Just right. to make sure that I keep the length longer and straight blunt in the back, I am going to over direct this piece to the center piece already cut. So I come in slightly. All of my guides are going to be visual. So I am not holding all of the hair together as we normally do. I'm holding it simply by itself, over directing it slightly to my previously cut, not all the way in, right? Just right here. Not too, Did I not bring it? I didn't bring it. Not too much tension. Um, I do want to ask if we are, um, sorry, my blade came up. Um, if you are not um, asking a question, if we can mute ourselves. Okay, all righty. So we can uh, get everybody that wants to ask questions. Here we go again. Over directed slightly, going to cut. So glide my razor from the mid shaft, not the top and not lower, middle shaft, one, two, we know that there's less density on the sides. And as I'm getting ready to cut, I bring in my previously cut section as my visual guide. Here we go. And I cut. So now we can see that the line correlates as, we're, as we keep cutting. These little baby hairs, remember we talked about lifting the hairline. These are the ones that are sticking out. Very important to know that in this haircut, these are going to peek out and they're going to become a problem if we don't cut them, <laughs> right? Model laughs because she knows it's true. So we just slightly get rid of those, okay? And now we get 
the hair to fall a little bit more even. Okay, so they're springing up. You're going to be able to see this when we dry the hair. I'm going to move to the other side. Holding down this section, over directing it slightly to the previously cut section. Here we go. If we can see that, holding my razor flat over the surface of the hair from the mid shaft to the ends, glide one, two, and as I'm getting ready to cut, I cut. Lift that section, get rid of the hair underneath. I'm going to turn her here just to make sure I have balance. All right, sorry, sorry, sorry. All right. We have a few hairs here. All righty. So we are seeing it kind of curl up right now, but we're going to be able to see this again when the hair is straight. It's going to be more of a blunt line here. We drop down the section right in the middle, which holds a lot of hair. You guys can see that. Making sure the hair is always prepared. I am going to use our active reconstructant by Kitoko. Yeah, that's a great cutting guide. Yeah, it keeps it nourished. So now we're going to follow the same steps I did earlier. Actually, Lori, you can be on this side. I'm going to move off camera to make sure that I'm in the middle. And Laura is going to be giving you guys the angle of this right here. So you guys can see here. Section is a top section. This has already been cut. We're going to subdivide this piece into three bigger sections. One, two, and three. We begin with the center. Bring it back again. Move this out of the way. I just had a quick question about the client's head position. Do you have her looking down for this? Uh, this second section, when I start to cut, I am not going to uh, face her down anymore. When you have the first section down here, this one you do. And with this one, we're going to have her looking straight out. Okay. So I want you guys to have the side view here and the back view from Laura. Okay. Maybe it's a little too straight. There we go. So maybe slightly there. So her chin is not completely pointing down. So this will be completely down, right? We have her facing out that way, but not up. That will give us a different, um, a different level of elevation. So we have her here. We hold this section. Because we're controlling the hair with our fingers in our hands, I'm going to hold this section. This is the previously cut. Hold it out. So... It is probably in an angle, more of an inclined position. Again, if you want to call it degrees, uh, we're calling this maybe 45 degrees. Holding the section slightly at a 45, I am going to use my razor in between the texture from the mid shaft to where I want to cut. So this is what I'm going to cut. I bring my fingers down to my guide. Coming from one side, one. Coming from the other side, two. Coming from the top, and then coming from underneath. And then I cut to the length. I wanna show you what cutting underneath is going to do. When we get her to blow, to, for the blowout, this hair is going to stay in. Can you guys see that? What happens here normally is that the hair, when it's this short, it likes to hug the head. So it will just stay completely out. But with the texture we just created under, when we blow it out or when a client goes home, she can totally have that without no problem, All right? So we're creating the style within the haircut without having to work on uh, too much maintenance after. We know that these days, everybody's looking for low maintenance, right? Okay, now we drop the both sides, sides on the, these sides, same, 
same position, hold the hair coming back. Now I'm not holding it to the same section underneath. I am holding it back and out again at that 45 degree, if that's what we wanna call it. I have my guide underneath, so I drop it. Texture from the mid shaft down to where I want to cut. One on the side, not two, just one. One inside, one under, and then I get ready to cut. Okay. These are just the little hairs that are coming out. I wanna show you guys how that's falling, right? Slightly, we are creating this graduation that normally with scissors, we would be holding in this angle. We would be coming in here. So all of these angles are very much the same, but with a natural fall and more to the person's head. So this has been designed for the person you're working with. And with using the razor, we are taking out the texture and the weight at the same time, and we're creating this haircut without having to work too much on it, okay? Going to do the same, same angle here so you guys can see. Actually, I'm going to move on to this side. Okay. Holding this angle, this section at an angle. Here we go, here's the angle. Underneath section, one on the side, mid shaft to the ends, gliding my razor very flat. Remember, we're working with this hair that it's curly. A lot of the times it can spring up more. Okay, one on the other side slightly, one underneath, one on the top, and we get rid of the lane. I'm just cleaning this line up. So what happened with me working from the head right out is that this section is going to remain a little longer. Remember what I said about this area right here behind the ear, now we saved it, right? If I would have cut it right in front, I would have a hole here now. That makes sense? Nancy, we just had a question come in. So this razor technique will work with straight, wavy, or curly hair. 100%. This is probably the scariest texture, you guys, if you were working with a razor, right? Because it's curly. She has gray hair. We know that that is a little bit more coarse. It will pop a little bit stronger. And having a super sharp razor, which would be a brand new razor, you're going to keep the texture and the consistency of the hair without damaging it. If you have ever heard that you're going to damage hair, curly hair with a razor, it's because razors maybe were used and they were dull. Make sure that you have a new razor. Make sure that you're working with clean tools and prepare the hair with something like Kitoko oil, or as I said, with our uh, active restructuring, always making sure that your hair is prepared. As we leave it right now, if Virginia wanted to just scrunch it in, this haircut looks great on curly hair, but today we're going to blow it out and see it smooth so we can see all these lines coming straight in, right? Thanks, Amanda. Hey, Nancy. Yeah. Yes. And on that, you're not pulling those side pieces to the center, right? You just like pulled it straight out. And then yes. Okay. Good question. Yes, completely out this way. So yeah, I'm not over directing them. That's okay. what over directing will look like. This is what straight up looks like. Okay. And then this angle here, I'm going to do the same. This is what back looks like. And this is what over directed looks like. Great. Thank thank you. You. I think that was Shauna. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Two All more right. questions. Do yes. you have, um, so would you do the same amount of texture strokes on someone with finer hair? Would you still do the three? Uh, so yes, so here's the thing. When you're doing someone with finer hair, which right now we're going to move into Virginia's front area. Can we see this here? We're yeah. moving into lower density. So if Virginia had straight hair, lower density around the hairline, we are going to do the same technique with less strokes. So if you were doing two on one side, only do one. Um, you can do it with the scissors, but I want to show you this, this haircut with taking out the, the bulk in, this, in these areas with a razor so you can see that the hair is already leaving a lot of movement and a lot of flow. So that's going to be important. On the sides, we can totally stick with scissors if, we, if we're finding that we want to leave more consistency in the hair, most, most definitely. So one thing to remember is you can choose your tool or keep the same movement with your razor, just doing it less times and being a little bit more careful. But that texture is needed for the way the hair is going to fall. So that's going to be very important. 
I'm going to do these sides with both, with razor and with scissors. And then one other question, sorry, do you have a favorite razor? Uh, you know what? This razor was a gift uh, a long time ago. I don't, any feather razor, I like to work with feather razors because I'm clumsy and I don't want to cut myself. I have uh, used the raised three razor once in a while and it is really cool. It cuts very clean, um, but I am very fast when I'm working. So I do feel that um, a feather razor is a little bit more of what I like to work with. Okay. Nancy, I have one more question. When you went in the back underneath it, where it can tuck, the hair can tuck under. Yeah. Oh, um, the, the, yeah, yes. Yes, yeah. that. I never realized, like, you know, some people say my hair sticks out in the back like a duck, you know. Yes. So that mm -hmm. will help it tuck under. Absolutely. Okay. You know, this is going to sound crazy, but I do this in, um, in bang trims too. Mm. If the hair likes to kick out, right, this way. I do that technique underneath and the hair falls straight, uh, like completely in. It's the perfect way to texture without, okay. you know, without uh, making it look like too curvy. It's just perfect. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So for the side sections, I'm going to come in to grab a section right on top of the ear. Her, she had an asymmetrical haircut. I am going to be holding these sections and over directing them to the back just to make sure again that I save hair right in back of the ear and right on top of the ear. We know that you know we don't have the same amount of hair that we have in the back, so we want to make sure that we at least try to save that. Okay, without um, too much tension. So this is tension, right? This, the section is completely straight. We leave a little bit of wiggle and we over direct to the back to the section we previously cut. So I'm not over directing to the center, which would be super asymmetrical. This is just over directed slightly to the previously cut section right here. Ooh, we have a little fly. Okay. Holding it here, giving it some movement, not stretching too much. I'm going to come in slightly. So this is a perfect example. If she had more hair, if it was thicker hair, we would do one, two, three, as many as we need. Right now, I just did one. This is all the hair I'm taking out. One there on the top and nothing underneath. I don't want to create any more texture in there and I'm just getting ready to cut. So as I get ready to cut and I see this hair, it's going to slightly fall asymmetrical, but I want it to. I want to make sure that this haircut is going to end a little bit more of a modern look, which is semi-asymmetrical. It's just the line here. And it's just sharper, right? It's not completely blunt here. We also want to make sure that it goes with the person's face and facial features. So now I hold up the section that I have right in the front, making sure that this one keeps as much length as possible. This is for the jawline. We want to make sure that it keeps a sharp line right in the front. Holding it down, I'm over-directing it to the previously cut section. I'm going to switch from my razor to my shears. To create that texture, I'm only going to place my scissors on top just to glide down and not take out too much texture. This is all I removed. Bringing it here, then I can cut to the previously cut section. Uh, maybe Laura's camera, you can see it better. All right, and I'm going to cut it. Great. All right. Now we just come in and make sure that this is going to be more of a straighter line. Here, as this, as this gets straighter, we're going to be able to see that we keep all the length of this haircut. So you see what happened here? Even if it was pulled back, it still didn't end up super long. Can we see that? We're going to have more of a straighter line. I'm going to do the same on the other side. There we go. Okay. Right is here.
Ready? Again, subsection right on top of the ear. Holding this section, over directing it to my previously line. Here's my previously cut. One, right, and cut. Now we cut this next one with scissors, over directing, and cutting straight. Sorry guys, my angle with the screen. All right, so now we're going to leave this down and we have all of our underneath. All right, perfect. So this is all shrinking up. You'll see it when it's straight. Now we're going to drop everything on the top. So if you had a client that had long hair and these are already shorter, the way that I'm going to do this might not completely work, but there's going to be alternatives. So we can see that this passes the length slightly. If you have seen me cut um, fringes or um, bangs, right? What I always talk about is um, when we subdivide the hair, we can always use any of our hair texture to save us from the underneath. So this is where if you feel that you cut your hair, the, the underneath part a little bit too short, this is where this part right here is going to save you. So this is why I like to section the hair this way. So now we're going to just comb this down. This is going to be blunt. The texture is all underneath. Remember this class is called the interior ways of the bob. So what we're doing here now is the texture is already created underneath. This surface on top is going to be not cut in with too much texture. We have to remember that we do want to have volume here, but the underneath texture is what's going to help us balance out the, the top part, giving us more volume. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to comb the hair down. Anywhere where we see the lane, we're just going to cut straight and blunt with our scissors. Right here. All right, straight, cutting to the lane. I'm over directing this part back here. Okay, over directing it slightly. And this is where you can see it. if you left any of the little hairs, that will help. Do we have a good view, Laura? I think so. Okay. Yeah, it looks great. Okay, good. Okay. This little guy. Perfect. Now we cut the sides. There. Slightly over directing behind the ear, cutting that length. Slightly over directed and slightly over directed. Okay. These pieces sticking out. Remember, this is from the hairline, so I'm not cutting into the perimeter. I'm just cutting the little pieces of hair that will come out. And that always happens with a bob if you guys like to cut bobs. Here I go again, sorry. All right, not too much into this care cut, right guys? Okay. That's what I was gonna say. I love it took so little time. <laughs> so little time, I'm done. Okay. It makes it so salon friendly. It really, really is. This is really where the styling, you can take up more time with the styling, making sure that um, you know the balance is right. 
All right, here we have a little point. So because I'm not standing in front of the mirror, I'm not looking at her the way that you guys might be able to see it there. All right, let's see. Okay, now we check her balance. Um, we're black, so making sure that we ended up in the same area. See how much it shrinks? You see how much I'm pulling? All right, we're gonna have her style in the back and then uh, we're gonna be able to check her more when the hair is dry. All right, before we finish, we're going to drop down the fringe area. We're doing this because it's already a little bit shorter. We're just going to join it to the rest of the haircut. And I'm just going to create a straight down from the top of the head and joining this front piece here, which is past her chin. I'm just going to bring that completely straight so we can see just the little straggly hairs that are right here, just joining it to the rest of the hair so we can have a little bit of an opening and more of a curtain bang feel. And I'll show you guys how we do that. Okay, so now that I cut that, just making sure it's balanced on both sides. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. To give it the uh, curtain bank feel, I'm just going to create a section in the middle, elevate this slightly, and cut off these extra pieces here. So you can see that the length is here. I'm just going to cut this straight and get rid of that corner. By getting rid of that corner, this hair here will fall more towards the middle. Luckily, Virginia's hair is kind of a middle part. So then just hold your hair here and get rid of any extra pieces on the sides. And that's it. I'm going to begin her blow dry so I can talk about the products I'm going to use to prep. And then I have Amanda Kurtz here, if you guys have met her, she's going to finish the style. I'll introduce her in a minute. Okay, and before I add products on curly hair, I always like to dampen the hair just a little bit more so the hair products can absorb into the hair more evenly. So if you guys know, curly hair is really thirsty. So what happens if we don't have even balance of moisture in the hair, the product is going to get sucked in, but not evenly, right? So if it was drier here, there's going to be more absorbance of product here. If this is wetter, then it's going to um, you know, be applied more evenly here. So always make sure that you have an even canvas of moisture first, water first all the time. We're going to add smoothie from Mode. Okay, just about a quarter size. I like to apply my products evenly in my hands. I don't rub them. Uh, what I like to talk about with our products is that if you emulsify them too much in your hand, you're breaking down the polymers and all of the products that are going to be necessary for your style. So make sure that you even it out in your hands, even if you have to put it on top of your fingers. Here's what happens. We're applying the, the product and the product is on top of our fingers. So when we do this, the product gets everywhere, right? So always give it a nice little massage. One other secret, I know people with uh, curly hair might say, do not, do not comb curly hair. I like to comb in the product in curly hair to make sure that it's evenly distributed but white teeth, okay? White teeth or a um, paddle brush, those are okay. Anything that is soft and not bristles. Okay. Uh, curtain, okay. yes. All right, and for the base of the, of the area here on the top, we're going to use Enforcer by Mode. 
which is a really strong spritz spray. Okay, and we're going to lift the sections right on the top, right here on the crown area. It will help to make this blow out. It helps with the tension of your brush. And I'm going to show that slightly before I take her back. And then I answer some more questions. Give me my smaller one, please. All the mode products too are fully cocktailable. They're super easy and lightweight to layer upon each other. Um, totally water soluble too. So you're not going to have that heaviness that you feel um, when you're using other product lines that the product kind of builds up on the hair, which is really nice too with mode. And Amanda, um, I'm glad you started talking. I'm going to mute myself, but what I want to explain is that I'm going to just blow dry a little bit of the front and the side, and then I'm going to send her back and then I'll, I'll be right back. Okay. Sounds great. All righty. If you guys have any questions. How many of you guys use any of the mode products or do you guys have any of your favorites in the mode line? One of my personal favorites and one of my clients' favorites is Waxworks. Uh, it's a great texture spray. It's super lightweight, but gives a nice little bit of hold. It really changes the hair, whether it's straight or curly. I love it on my bobs um, and my short hair clients. It's super workable and really a versatile product. Um, but what about you guys? If you guys want to put it in the chat or unmute yourself, do you guys have a favorite? I've been using Color Wow. I like it really well. Okay. Anybody else? Shauna, do you have a favorite mode product? I haven't. I don't know anything about the products, but hopefully I'll get to learn about those too. Yeah, definitely. We'll have to get you using some of them. Yeah. Uh, I love the dream cream. I'm just going to chime in. It has that crushed dust, so you get like tons of shine. And um, I blew out my hair in Virginia in the summer when I was on vacation. And my hair goes like, you know, it's like a cotton, like a Q-tip. Yeah. So everybody does. And so it, I could run my hands through it all day. My hair gets super tangly usually. And that sold me. And then all my clients love it. It helps with frizz. But like you said, Amanda, it doesn't like build up on the hair, yeah. which is really other products like the Moan Miracle Mist in as well to prime it. Love that. Yeah. Dream Cream is definitely a huge seller too. And what always gets people about Dream Cream is just like Nancy said, put it in your hands and kind of just do a light rub together and you can see all the gold shimmer through it. Um, we're all girls. We all like that, that shimmer, right? <laughs> Thanks, Julia. Yeah, hey, Amanda. Amanda. Oh, this is Shauna. Hey, Shauna. Hi. I like the tough stuff for, especially for my girls for dance. Like they just had a competition on Saturday. And so to, you know, slick back all those flyaways, they want it super straight and a strong hold. Yep. But I will ask though, with that, yeah. when you put it on, I'm putting it on dry hair, mm -hmm. but sometimes like once I put it on and I go to take my comb and comb it straight through, I didn't mm -hmm. have it the first time around, but for some reason Saturday, it was like harder for me to comb it through my girls were like you know saying oh you're hurting me <laughs> so um, yeah what should I should I do something different or just it's just it's super tough and that's what it's for but I mean that is what it's for I will say maybe emulsifying it in your hands a little bit more okay could probably play a little bit of a role into it if it was super cold or, or the product was super cold, okay. um, depending on where and what time, especially this time of year when it's just colder. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, yeah, just maybe emulsifying it a little bit more. Okay. Um, sometimes I also like to do it with Katoko oil as like an initial primer and then really set it with um, a final overlay of um, tough stuff or what, whatever it may be, you know? So would you put the cocoa oil on first or mix it in with the tough stuff? Yeah, I would cocktail them together. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll try that. Yeah. And the nice thing about tough stuff is that it doesn't leave like a flakiness or anything, which is right. good. So, I mean, it, you can comb through it, but yeah, that would soften it up just a tiny bit. Yep. And I, like you said, they're all water soluble. So like to even be able to comb through a little bit, I, I spritzed it a little and that was helping to have that more pliable you know, to be able to get through it a little easier. 
Yeah, that's what I was going to also say. Like you could you could spray it with Miracle Mist even if you wanted to soften it a tiny bit rather than water. You could do a Miracle Mist. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Thanks. Yep, you got it. I also want to make note um, if any of you, I sent a, a private message to some of you. If you guys can pop over to the chat. Uh, some of you don't have your last names or your emails. If we could just pop in your last name and emails, if you don't have it under your screen name, um, that would be super helpful. I'd appreciate that. Um, we just had a question about a heat protectant. Yep, so we have Heat Shield. Heat Shield is an awesome heat protectant from Mode. Um, and what I love about it so much is a lot of times I find heat protectants to be really sticky and our heat protectant within the Mode line is, um, is not sticky whatsoever. Uh, it also sprays out, but it's not very wet of a spray, if that makes sense. Um, sometimes we I feel like we have to use a heat protectant and then hit it with like a blow dryer to dry it before um, thermal styling. And I don't feel like that's the case at all. Um, I don't know that she can hear us right yet, but I will ask her if she used a heat protectant um, when we get her unmuted. I didn't um, catch what the first product she used was. Um, I wonder, did that have one built in by chance or, um, I just had a bottle be, um, with the miracle mist, uh, I, I think it was miracle mist. And I know she used the Kotoko, um, active reconstructant. And then she also used the smoothie, which isn't, which is not a heat protectant. It's a blowout, uh, blowout, um, uh, cream or serum. And then she also used, um, a root, a root spray. Okay, see, I don't, I think the third one you mentioned, but I think the Miracle Mist has heat protection, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. I Somebody think wanted the heat protectant. You have one in the mode that is specifically for heat? Yep, we have heat shield. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and it comes in an 8.45 ounce bottle. So it's actually a very large bottle too. So everything within the mode line is it smells great. It's not heavy. It's not a heavy, um, heat protectant whatsoever. We just had that come over in the chat. It's very lightweight and it's workable. You can either spray it in on damp hair and blow dry it in, or you're able to, um, spray it on dry hair and do any sort of thermal styling with it. Um, the smells are also something to know. A lot of times, a lot of other brands have these high fragrances in them, which are really drying. And all of our fragrances come from an actual perfumery. So they're not drying whatsoever, um, which is a great point to them as well. Okie dokie. I'm going to send her to get blown out in the back. Uh, we can see how in just a blow dry, this will be a very nice look as well. Okay, so I'm going to have Amanda do a more straighter. We always know, and I will explain that when we come back, is that we keep the bottom of the haircuts straighter, and then we create texture on the top, and we'll do that when she brings her back, okay? So I'm going to send Virginia back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How much money? All right. She's checking her meter. <laughs> All right, guys. So um, what did I miss? So we were talking a lot about heat, um, heat shield, if it was a heavy spray or not. And then also, if you could just recap the products that you use on Virginia's hair as well. Yes. Please. So we prepped with Kitoko oil treatment. We sprayed our active restructurant. Um, I think we took it back to respray. Oh, okay. All righty. Here we go. Active restructurant from Kitoko as well. So I have both in the salon. I have uh, Kitoko art and I also have mode. Um, there is some preferences when it comes to styling. Um, I normally stick more to Kotoko Art, but today I wanted to do some more products that I know that even um, 
Amanda, who's blow drying, is more used to. So that's also, it has a lot to do with the artist, right? The artist picks their paint. So Amanda likes to use the mold line more. So I wanted to make sure that I was going to use something that she can be comfortable blow drying. Um, also, I prepared with smoothie, uh, which is a blow dry lotion, but it also is for finer hair. It makes like a a thicker feel in the hair if the hair uh, is a little bit too fine and it doesn't allow or hold too much texture. This will allow the any of the texture in the haircut to just define itself. Okay. And hey, Nancy, uh, with that, sorry, if I have a client who has curly hair and it's she's lost a lot of it, it's just finer. If she wanted to blow dry it straight, that would be good because it would feel a little heavier or thicker. Yes. yes, so it gives your brush tension. Um, and one of the things that, and I think Amanda took um, Enforcer, uh, with products that give you tension, you can get a smoother and also thicker feel uh, result. So I do love smoothie for that. Okay. And if she wanted to leave it curly, would that still be okay? She, okay. Yes, definitely. You know what? I do love um, cocktailing my smoothie with the curl cream from Mode. Or you can also use um, for that finer texture uh, control of curl cream. It's one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would actually recommend to leave in your curl, curl booster from Katoko. Okay. This is a very lightweight cream <clears throat> and it's not heavy. So it will definitely leave a really nice feel without too much crunch. Okay. So this is a great product for that. Yeah, it really defines the curl. Yes, yes, it does. Um, so this haircut did go a little fast. I do want to talk about that. So I like to start my clients with a pre prepared hair. I cut it. Uh, I cut it wet. I keep wetting the hair if I need to. Lots of times if it's more of a shag or if um, Virginia had a different type of curly texture, I will leave it in and diffuse it, right? Right now, we're going to give you guys a final result with a little bit more of a straighter look at the perimeter. Um, again, I know that I showed a few pictures at the beginning. I didn't really call this haircut anything other than interior ways of the of the bob. So you can get the idea that wherever or whatever line you want to finish with, you can do the exact same way, these, these all these movements the exact same way, just leaving your weight line a little bit different. You can leave it asymmetrical, you can keep it blunt, you can make it rounded, um, but while all with the same sectioning. So this is something that I hope is helpful on whatever direction you're going with. So also with this haircut here, when we see it finished, I finish all of my haircuts dry. Yeah. So even if there was some pieces that maybe I didn't get with the razor because we didn't have a connecting guy, we had a more visual um a visual guide, right? I was holding it and it was more like eye visual. I want to make sure that these lines are connected because it is a bob. It still has to be somewhat structured. And I want to make sure that it all happens at the very end. Also joining at the front with the back, making sure that this has a nice balance. So you'll see me continue. Um, I know that some people are logging out. It has been an hour, I believe. Has it been an hour? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, cool. So it is about an hour, the, this class. I just want to be able to show the results when they come back. Um, I will also have these results on my Instagram later, and we'll be able to share more of this. But um, I'm still here, and I'm not going anywhere. So if you can stay on and um, just continue the class, I want to show you what I finalized with. What's that? Oh, yes. Ah, yeah. So actually we can talk about the, um, Amanda is teaching a class this afternoon at 4 p.m. That will be the next class on the schedule. And I'm sorry. West Coast. Oh, yes, yes. West Coast is 4 p.m. I have Laura here. Normally we will probably be chatting um, or sending information on the chat, but she's right here. So it's easier information. Uh, so at 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. And then um, Amanda, you might know the times a little bit better. Yep, so it is 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern, and 6 p.m. for everybody else in the middle. <laughs> um, what's the name of the class? So that is going to be launching our new Super Smooth. So Super Smooth is a new amino acid-based smoothing treatment that is 
absolutely incredible. It totally transforms the hair. And so that is our smoothing treatment that we are just launching. So again, it is absolutely incredible. If you guys are in the market for a smoothing treatment, if you guys are looking to add smoothing treatments to your service menu, or if you guys are um, currently doing smoothing treatments, it's really a class to tune into and learn the differences and how it can um, really increase your revenue over these next couple of months. So completely a brand new product with ASP. And again, it's absolutely incredible. Yeah, if you guys remember, we never had a smoothing treatment in ASP because we believe in creating healthy products. And since this is a completely new formulation, it's not based of keratin, it's based of aminos. So amino acids, this, this, this system is completely vegan. We can talk about that too. And it really creates a different type of smoothing for your hair. The, the feel of the hair, the amino acids are actually repairing the hair at the same time that we're adding the ingredients into the hair to make it smooth. It's mis making it just very, very shiny, frizz free. Um, it does kind of relax, not relax, but it does smooth out the curl just slightly. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, you, you'll you get results from this. So if you're used to some type of smoothing, this is going to be a game changer. I normally, did, I wanted to face out my keratin treatments here at my salon. Mm -hmm. We are a completely vegan salon. Um, not in taking, I'm actually a meat eater, but we're a vegan salon as my, as far as all of our products. And of course I carry only ASP, but this one falls right into what we believe. And it's um, the health of the hair, the health of a stylist, the health of a client. Um, so that's what we like. Yeah. So how so long did the treatment last? So it lasts up to 12 weeks. Okay. And, and what's the that? What was that? What would be the starting price if you were charging for that treatment? Like, would you charge as you would for a keratin treatment? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it definitely, it actually works so much better than a keratin better, treatment. Faster. Yeah, faster. better, faster. And again, like Nancy says, completely changes the hair. I mean, it is an absolutely incredible, the shine, the texture, the feel, um, I've tested it. I've tried it. It's absolutely incredible. Completely oh, transformed our hair. Okay, um, I'm totally interested. Yeah, I definitely got into the class tonight. Yes. 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 Price point wise, the average across the nation is anywhere from 200, 250 up to about 450. Um, so it's completely up to what your market charges and what you're comfortable charging. Um, the service time for it is about anywhere from 80 to 90 minutes, maybe two hours, um, depending on your client's texture, um, how much hair they have and, um, um, how quick you work. <laughs> so, uh, Laura just said, if you are interested in the, in getting the link, uh, make sure you type in your email address. Laura can send that information tonight and you'll be able to get in the class tonight. Um, we just had a question, Michelle, this That's is a awesome. developer. I'm sorry. We just had a question in the chat from Michelle. Does this have, does That's this have a developer? Serious. What do you mean by that, Michelle? You can unmute yourself. Is that for the smoothing treatment or mm. a smoothie? Oh, oh, okay. Um, smoothie is this product. The smoothing system, it does not have a developer. It's just, it's low, it's the lotion. It's the actual product. It's just one product. Uh, there is a pre preparation for your hair prior, which is a detox shampoo and after a shampoo and conditioner and just your uh, amino smooth treatment, just like a keratin treatment would. It's not mixed with anything else. If that answers your question. But you make it into it. Uh -huh. Yay. Awesome. Well, um, yeah, I'm checking these out now. Um, one of the things I wanted, I wanted to go back to um, the cutting class, if that's okay. I, if you can share the screen one more time, Amanda. Yep. Um, we just had a question. So there is no formaldehyde. Correct. There is absolutely no formaldehyde mm -hmm. and it actually has zero fumes too. It's pretty incredible. Um, which slide did you want yeah, me to? Um, actually, this one where um, I added, go forward, it, it should be almost the last one. 
Okay, I wanted to share this. Laura, I haven't, I sent it to you last night. Um, I was interviewed for an article of Latest Hairstyles. It's a magazine for hair. And if you do go on to my Instagram, I have it linked in the bio right now. It's this link right here that you see. It's Latest Hairstyles. So this article talks about the bob um, and how we design it for women older, uh, older than 50 and over. So it's a 50 plus best hairstyles and I was able to write for the magazine. So if you guys check it out, I have a lot of um, insight on how to design it specifically for people that are a little bit older. We can always do these hairstyles on any age as we are entering a world of all generations are inclusive as well as we know, right? Everything is just um working a little bit different in 2023 and i want to make sure that you guys get a little bit of information on this article it has a lot of good information so just wanted to show that thank you uh -huh, you're welcome and i'm going to go check on amanda and we also have another class coming up and i believe it's the um it's uh it's one of the blonding classes right system blonde yeah Yep, we have a blonding class next Monday, same time as today. Um, that will be with me, and we'll be recapping some of our lighteners, some lightening techniques, and some fun formulas. So that'll be a really great class. If you guys want to join that class, just hop on over to our link tree, or some of you I know use Eventbrite, and that'll get linked over to us, and you'll be able to um, get the registration link for that. Good. Um, all of our classes, we had a question to all of our classes, are um, recorded and we record them, we get them edited as soon as possible, and then we put them up on our, U, um, our ASP YouTube page. So on our YouTube page, it's a really great resource for you guys to reference. We have beginner classes, advanced classes, we're constantly updating our classes that are on there. And so as soon as this class gets edited, we'll get that up there for you guys. Um, and that's where you'll be able to find that. Um, any other questions on anything ASP? I do have a question on hair cutting. Okay. So, you know, when you cut your hair, like the client's hair, and you have them look down, and then at the end, you know, you're making sure all the hair underneath, like, sometimes I still have those longer pieces. Mm-hmm coming out from the bottom. Does that make sense? And I don't know what I'm doing wrong. No, uh, it totally makes sense. So what I did was um, I, I did this at the beginning, before you start and even after, when you lift the hair from your client and you drop down the hairline just very, very organically, you're going to be able to see if they have that McDonald's kind of like M, M you know, yeah. the, in the back, right? If it's very strong, when you blow dry and you already cut it, those pieces are going to be longer because mm -hmm. they were included in the cut. So what happens is they were like this, you blow dry, now they go like this. So now they're going to be longer peeking out pieces. I'm going to check Virginia. I actually went back there. I cleaned them up at the beginning, so I didn't really see them. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, you know, I like to actually show all the little ins and outs, the wrongs, the greats, the everything. I, I don't like to hide things when I'm teaching. It's uh, because it's very realistic. We want to know what happens when we do these things, right? So if she has a few of them, I want to show you what I do with them and how we clean them up. It has nothing to do with your haircut. It has to do with the way the hair lays once it's dry. And that always happens in here. Um, if they stay up, Sometimes when you cut them, they will spring up and actually make the bob look a little bit bulkier on the top. I like to use pomade and I have a few here. If she has them that we're going to use, oops, sorry. I'm gonna use uh, either dry mud or tasty paste. These two can help just to keep the length, like, you know, it kind of makes it, uh, it gives a grip so it stays down and it also just, you know, makes it more, gives you more definition and separation. Uh, but we will see what we need it's almost like now that we created our dish does it need more salt right so with same with the haircut now we're going to see the final touches what she needs and we're just going to put those in there as well um but even like on a long like if somebody's hair is long uh -huh. and i'll have them do you usually have them tilt their head down or leave it straight 
Oh, yes. Straight across. And then, you know, if they look down, then it's a little longer still. Is that just the same? Yes. So you want to keep your client facing down. So, okay. So this is one of the biggest things is once you get to right behind the ear, so right here, this area, you want to make sure your client's always tilted down. You put them up when you're dropping this section up. And okay. you can round down and then you can cut it straight. Okay. That will that will prevent you from having longer pieces. Okay. Always have them facing down for behind the ear to the nape. That's one of my my rules for myself. And for the sides, you make sure you over direct slightly everything to the back without tilting the head. Because what happens is again we have no hair when it comes to this area as we do right at the nape. So we want to make sure that we don't compromise anything here by elevating the hair. We're having to tilt it down because it's going to change, right? Mm -hmm. As you tilt down, it's going to stay longer. So just making sure that from behind the ears, tilt the head down, cut yeah. the back, then straighten the head and make sure that you even it out. Okay, thanks. Yes, and I think that's important right now because everybody wants those really disconnected looks. They don't want a whole lot of that like face framing in the front unless they're intentionally doing like a shag or something, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Exactly. All right, it looks like she might be ready. I'm going to bring her. Just another reminder, if you haven't already, if you can just put your email in the chat. I know I've gotten a bunch already. There's a couple more that I would, that I'm waiting on. Um, that would be great. Thank you. Okie dokie. All right, so she was flipped to the side. Let me work on this one. So you guys can see the back. So I'm going to tilt her, I mean, move her so you can see the back. We're going to break down this wave. Going to see the balance in the back. Okay, so they were cleaned up pretty much at the beginning. So I feel that we were able to get that. We can see what the over direction did is that it gave us this curve, but when she's back, it's straight, right? This is why we needed that um, over direction. Let's show the sides. Okay, so we know this perimeter back here will probably never be the same as we have on the sides unless we over direct it more. So here we could totally, we could have totally over directed a little bit more to, to give this line a little bit more of a heavier feel. Again, these are the things that happen if the hair is, let me see. Here. If the hair is um, curly, right? So it's going to spring up. So right here, if we wanted to, we could have definitely over-directed slightly a little bit more. You guys can see that. Oh, it actually isn't. It's just curved in. Okay. It's just curved in. I just noticed that. So this is curved in. If it was straight, I want to show you the line. Do we see it? It's straighter. Oh, good. That makes me feel a lot better. Can we see it all, everybody? <laughs> now I feel a lot better. It's just uh, waved in right here. Okay. All right. Let's see the other side. And making sure, so this is part of this back here, okay, that this perimeter is straight. Maybe it's a little bit longer. I'm going to cut this right here. It's just a little piece. Great. All right, here's the one piece I wanted to show you all. One of my best and favorite tools is a 14 inch texture shear. And what I like to do is on the surface area where we cut it all one length, I grab it in the same type of form, which was a round section. You let all the underneath fall, and then we have that section. So I hold this section up 
And I take down this point, which can we see that, Laura? Can you guys see the point? Now, now we can. As you pull it down, we can. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that point there. Come in, open and close all of this section, taking pieces in like this. So kind of just like halfway through that strand. Uh, yeah, from the mesh up. Cool. Yep. And then that just creates more movement here. Okay. So she was parted in the center. And we got a comment that we love the fringe. Oh, good. Yay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So this is it, guys. Here's her finished look. All right. How do we feel about it? People are loving it. I think it looks Beautiful. amazing. Nice. Good. We'll have some final pictures and I'll post them so you guys can see them more detailed and I'll have a video and a reel uh, just so everybody can get more of this look. Sound good? All right. I'm going to let Virginia get up and then I'm just going to say my goodbyes. Oh. <laughs> Very cute. All right. All right. And if there's any more questions, very beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You did an awesome job. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hope you guys learned something and take it back with you and uh, be able to apply these techniques, which is the most important. Any more information on products? I like to post what I use on my Instagram. And I know that Amanda, we all like to share. Amanda Kurtz. Oh, Amanda, you didn't introduce me. <laughs> <laughs> that's amanda back there uh she also has a lot of posts with a lot of formulas and a lot of you know different types of styling products so we always like to share all of our educators do so um just keep checking mm -hmm. in with us okay all righty all right everyone well that's all i have and uh thank you for being here i know a few of you are still around here so i appreciate that thanks everybody. Yeah, that, thanks for joining i enjoy me. learning Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll see some Thank of you, you later on. Bye. Today. Bye, everybody. Bye.